Hi guys, we're here for a Bible in a Year challenge reading for September 19th. And today that reading is going to come from Isaiah 53, Song of Songs, chapter 8, verses 1 through 7, and James chapter 4. Okay, Isaiah chapter 53. Who has believed our message? To whom will the Lord reveal his saving power? My servant grew up in the Lord's presence. Like a tender green shoot sprouting from a root in dry and sterile ground. There is nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance. Nothing to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected. A man of sorrows. Acquainted with bitterest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way when he went by. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weakness he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God for his own sins. But he was wounded and crushed for our sins. He was beaten that we might have peace. He was whipped and we were healed. All of us have strayed away like sheep. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the guilt and sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep is silent before the shearers, he did not open his mouth. From prison and trial they led him away to his death. But who among the people realized that he was dying for their sins, that he was suffering for their punishment? He had done no wrong, and he never deceived anyone. But he was buried like a criminal. He was put in a rich man's grave. But it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and fill him with grief. Yet when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have a multitude of children, many heirs. He will enjoy a long life, and the Lord's plan will prosper in his hands. When he sees all that is accomplished by his anguish, he will be satisfied. And because of what he has experienced... My righteous servant will make it possible for many to be counted righteous, for he will bear all their sins. I will give him the honors of one who is mighty and great because he exposed himself to death. He was counted among those who were sinners. He bore the sins of many and interceded for sinners. And obviously we're talking about Jesus there. Okay, and then Song of Songs, chapter 8. Verses 1 through 7. Okay. Young woman, oh, if only you were my brother who nursed at my mother's breast, that I could kiss you no matter who was watching and no one would criticize me. I think they would. <laughs> I would bring you to my childhood home, and there you would teach me. I would give you spiced wine to drink, my, my sweet pomegranate wine. Your left hand would be under my head, and your right hand would embrace me. I want you to promise, O women of Jerusalem, not to awaken love until the time is right. Young women of Jerusalem, who is this coming up from the desert, leaning on her lover? Young woman, I aroused you under the apple tree, where your mother gave you birth, where in great pain she delivered you. Place me like a seal over your heart or like a seal on your arm. For love is as strong as death and its jealousy is as enduring as the grave. Love flashes like fire, the brightest kind of flame. Many waters could not quench love, neither can rivers drown it. If a man, if a man tried to buy love with everything he owned, his offer would be utterly despised. Okay. And James chapter 4. Drawing close to God. What is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Isn't it the whole army of evil desires at war within you? You want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous for what others have and you, and you can't possess it, so you fight and quarrel to take it away from them. And yet the reason you don't have what you want is that you don't ask God for it. And even when you do ask, you don't get it because your whole motive is wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. You adulterers, don't you realize that friendship with this world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again, that if your aim is to enjoy this world, you can't be a friend of God. 
What do you think the scriptures mean when they say that the Holy Spirit, whom God has placed within us, jealously longs for us to be faithful? He gives us more and more strength to stand against such evil desires. As the scriptures say, God sets himself against the proud, but he shows favor to the humble. So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw close to God and God will draw close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you hypocrites. Let there be tears for the wrong things you have done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter and gloom instead of joy. When you bow down before the Lord and admit your dependence on him, he will lift you up and give you honor. Warning against judging others. Don't speak evil against each other, my dear brothers and sisters. If you criticize each other and condemn each other, then you are criticizing and condemning God's law. But you are not a judge who can decide whether the law is right or wrong. Your job is to obey it. God alone, who made the law, can rightly judge among us. He alone has the power to save or to destroy. So what right do you have to condemn your neighbor? Warning about self-confidence. Look here, you people who say, Today or tomorrow we are going to a certain town and will stay there a year. We will do business there and make a profit. How do you know what will happen tomorrow? For your life is like the morning fog. It's here a little while, then it's gone. What you ought to say is, if the Lord wants us to, we will live and do this or that. Otherwise, you'll be boasting about your own plans, and all such boasting is evil. Remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. And that is all for today's reading. We will see you tomorrow.